handle, huh? We're going to refer to this today. But let me ask you before we get into our topic today on the holidays continued, we are past Thanksgiving now of 2023. So if you're watching this, another time of the year, you'll still get something out of it. Don't skip off of it, you know. Um, but if, uh, I just want to ask you all, how did your Thanksgiving go? Did you practice some of what I've shared here on the channel um, and on our support group about expectations? about um, acceptance, about other things that we've talked about. Did you uh, make some decisions? Or did you empower yourself to make decisions and decide what you were and weren't going to do? Um, maybe all of it was great for you and positive and did not bring up your loss or cause you deeper distress. Then that's awesome. Um, if you did things differently, share with me. How did your Thanksgiving go? Did you have any grief first? Did you, um, did you, you know, did you reduce your expectations? So just curious about your Thanksgiving. So now we're going to move more towards Christmas, which everybody jumps right into. I encouraged everybody in the group to slow down and be thankful, spend time. If you believe in Jesus Christ, spend time with your Savior. Spend time, slow down, don't jump so quickly into the Christmas holidays. Now we're going to move a little more into that now. Again, you don't have to go fast. Everything you do this year based on you, your whole life turning upside down, the sign for it, um, really says that you need to slow down and probably definitely do less and do things differently because things are going to be much more difficult and different this year. So what I want to share uh, based on, th these are key points that Gary Rowe talks about that I'm referring to. Um, and today I'm going to refer to the third, one of his key top points for the holidays um, to helping yourself through the holidays or however you want to word that. Um, the first one is acceptance, which we've talked about in the past on several different rounds and um, the importance of acceptance. And he, as he says, it's acceptance versus flight, fight, or freeze. So um, that's kind of the first tip for the holidays is embracing that acceptance. And if you don't really understand what that means, put in acceptance in some of mine with my name and you should see a couple of them on that. The second key point is expectation, managing your expectations. How are you dealing with that? Um, and realizing your own expectations about yourself for yourself or your, for the holidays for yourself or your family for the holidays. What are their expectations of you? So done a whole video on that. So the third one now today is on honoring your loved one, doing something special over the holidays to honor your loved one. Make Now, this is what Gary says exactly. I don't want to claim anything as mine that's mine, but it is make a simple plan to honor your loved one. And then there's an A to B. He didn't say it like that, but I noticed there's two points to it, basically an A and a B to that. And the first one is just for you. A is just for you. So first of all, make a simple plan to honor your loved one during the holiday just for you. Huh? Maybe that's foreign to you. It's still foreign to me, even though I've learned self-care is important. And um, it's... Frankly, I don't totally know what mine is. So I'll talk about that in a minute. So maybe y'all can give me ideas. So, but I am going to give some different ideas that Gary mentions. Um, so I was hoping to have it ready for today, but I'm just being honest. Um, although I will share something that I'm already doing that honors my daughter on a regular basis. So, but it's just for you. Now I'm going to go ahead and mention B because that'll be, I'll be discussing that one next week. And that works out good because we are doing a candlelight ceremony, a very beautiful and special candlelight ceremony at our church, Calvary Chapel Worship Center in Newport Ritchie. And it is, you can still register for it. It is completely complimentary, free, whatever word you want to use, no cost to it. And we're, you know, money is being put into it to make it special. You're going to get your own candle in honor of your loved one if you register. You will get a uh, candle that will have your loved one's name on it. And um, 
we are having a video tribute, but the deadline's passed on that. But we are still going to have a special table for you if you register now to put your picture of your loved one on it. So, and there's another surprise and there's going to be food. So it's going to be a very special evening start at 7 p.m. So if you want to know more about that, PM me or send me a comment if you want to know more about that, if you live in the Tampa Bay area, because if you're in the Tampa Bay area, you may want to make the drive. Um, it's going to be very special. So that we're going to talk about doing it in as a group or as Gary says, um, involving others. We're going to talk more about that next week. Now, that is the way I tend to think about memorials or me honoring my daughter Heidi is in a group. Last year, we put out all her um, stone collection out and everybody picked up a stone we liked. And then as we went around the room, we all shared happy memories. And it got a couple of my sons talking more than they normally do about her. And it was really good. So I tend to think in a group because I raise kids and that's just who I am as a leader. But I am going to have, I'm definitely going to come up with something just for me. Uh, now, what Gary says, here's some examples of it, is you can just light a candle. That's why I pulled up this pretty candle. Um, you can just light a candle and honor them. You know, put it on a table, whatever, and it can be your own little vigil. Okay, so that's probably the simplest one out there, but he wants you to know it needs to be, does not have to be complex. But some of the other suggestions may take a little more uh, work or whatever, but it shouldn't be something that's, it should be something you enjoy and you want to do in honor of your loved one. So some examples are give a donation in honor of that, maybe to a charity or someplace that has to do with, somehow has to do with what they love or something like that. And uh, we're served somewhere in honor of them. Uh, we have people that are going to be helping us with the candlelight ceremony. So that's that definitely covers that. Maybe make food in honor of them to give out to somebody. A gift in honor of them. Other ideas. There's, those are just a few specifics that he throws, throws out that I want to throw out um, to just get you all thinking. Um, it could be go somewhere in honor of them. Someone that they love that you go there and you really think about them and, you know, so somewhere where you go is special. But I encourage you to do that for you. So I always have a scripture and I was like, well, I can't think of an exact scripture for this, but I love this one and it's an important command from Jesus, from, from God. And um, so I'm going to read it to you and then tell you why I, meant, why I chose this because I believe it includes, um, you know, uh, a lot of the people that I know, a lot of my friends are givers. And then we have sometimes the takers in this world. Don't really want to go there and focus on that. But um, so it's important that I believe, I've always done this with my friends and as a coach to empower people to do for themselves as well. And a lot of, everybody calls it self-care now. And that's not a bad thing to call it. Um, but here is where I felt like God showed me something years ago. Jesus replied, and this is in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's really what it's saying. I believe all three are totally important and God wants us to do all three, all three. And, you know, we can go on and on. Well, if you don't give to yourself, you can't give out. Yeah, but there's a lot of people who are givers. They do continue to give out, even though they're not doing it for themselves properly. You know, we all have to do some things, obviously, or we can't live with you. We don't eat. We don't do anything. But it really is um, it's important. I believe we are important. Every one of us is important. So love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm not going to do a whole sermon on that, but that's my verse I want to share. So I don't know if that helps you to be motivated to do something for yourself when you're usually a person constantly working and giving to others. But I believe Jesus is saying that there. And it's saying to show love to yourself, not selfishness, not pride, not um, self-centeredness and all that stuff that we know is wrong. So I'm not speaking to that because we know that. 
you know, I believe there's a proper love for all three. And putting God first is definitely first. And when you love him, he will teach you to take care of yourself and love yourself. And that's what he's taught me as I seek him. Not be perfect, but as I seek him. So that's my verse for today. But so when I, I'll be honest with you, um, I didn't really see this until this year, always learning something new. I knew that Gary Rowe stressed to honor your loved ones somehow, and I thought of it more as including others. So this came strong to me just for me. So I'm going to take this seriously. I don't want to just be a teacher. I want to be a person who practices what I preach. Right? Um, but I had to think, well, why? I mean, I believe it's a good idea. I don't doubt him. But why? So these are the four reasons that came to me pretty quickly. Acceptance. That whole thing about acceptance. If we are honoring our loved one in some way, by some kind of action, even if it's lighting a candle, it's accepting that they're gone. And it's accepting the reality. But it's still remembering them, remembering the good. So I believe that's a step of acceptance. Second of all, um, what I came up with is it's, it's part of processing the loss itself. Anytime we do something outside of our body to, to cause us to think through the person that we love and that they're gone and to think back and anything, that's, that's actually what mourning, the word mourning is, M-O-U-R-N-A-N-G. Usually grief is used all the time now. You hardly ever hear the word mourning. But grief is what goes on inside of you. It's all that's going on inside of you due to that loss. And any time you express that out or do something outside of yourself around others or not, it's mourning. So Jesus said, okay, here's a scripture. I could have thought of this one. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. That would have been even a better verse for today, but both. So, so you are processing your loss. Third, what I came up with is you're showing respect to yourself and to your loved one. You're showing respect to yourself and to your loved one. Okay? Think about it. it kind of makes sense. You're respecting your own memory of them and love for them, and you're also respecting them, even though they're not hearing you. And maybe nobody else talks about it. I hope that's not the truth. But if they don't, you can talk about it. You can remember them. And that's what matters the most. Okay? The fourth reason is I'm very much about the circle of control. And um, you can look online about that circle of control, circle of influence. Um, they have diagrams all over the place online. And I very much emphasize that we need to recognize what's out of our control. And if we're trying to control that or change that, we're going to be miserable. This is, again, I got in depth on this in other videos. So look it up and you'll see what I'm talking about. But bottom line, if you had a loved one die, a sister, brother, mother, dad, friend, whoever it is, child, like I did, that died, that's out of your control. You can't bring them back. So the quicker you can accept that, the more you can move on and move through, not past, but move on and keep moving through and work through the loss. Um, so but when you take back what's in your control and you focus on what's in your control, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm here. I'm focusing on what's in my control. Trust me, I have things I could still be totally bummed about, consumed with, and many people would be. I, I, I'm back in counseling to get some help with some of it, and God's showing me new things, and i got to work on some new things. But I'm not going to let myself be consumed with it. I want to move forward through it. That's what's in my control. So I believe honoring your loved one does something by yourself or the holidays is something in your control. Now, maybe the whole holidays feels out of your control. All it feels like you don't feel like you have any control of it. That's most likely true, or a lot of it is. So when you do something purpose to honor your loved one, you are working through it, you are honoring them, you are walking through acceptance and respect, and you're also focusing on something that's in your control. So I think that can really help you be grounded during the holidays. Maybe do it closer to Christmas so that you can look forward to it. Whatever works. But i that's what's helping me to know that we're having this special candlelight ceremonies helping me to know that I have my 
grief support group is something that is in my control that I'm working on versus everything that's out of my control. And it's what keeps me grounded, y'all. So I just wanted to mention that. So if you want any more information, I'm mentioning more about the support group tonight as well as this candlelight ceremony that's coming up on December 8th. We meet every Tuesday night in Newport Ritchie at my church um, to do our support group, which men and women of all losses, not just bereavement, death, losses are welcome. We do have some people that come in for other types of losses. So you are welcome to come try out our group, try it out for a few weeks at least. We are having a Christmas party on the 19th. Um, great time to join during the holidays when you need that support and help if you're not getting enough. So if you want any more information about this, please you can comment or PM me on Messenger um, and I will get back to you. So please reach out. Look forward to hearing from you. Look forward to your comments about today. Did it help you at all? What it, maybe you already can think of what you're going to do. Tell me what you're going to do and tell me how your Thanksgiving was. I love comments and I always go in and respond back if you notice. Um, so you will get a comment back from me. Um, that makes me know that you're not just watching, but you're really getting something. Okay. And I hope you are. So God bless you. Signing off. Julie K. Helping you find your way through grief and loss and the holidays. Bye-bye.